Shalom. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to do a uh, response to this video. I um, was checking this video out, real good video, about a beloved brother, Harab, all right, of GMS Miami. As you can see here, his YouTube page, GMS Harab Miami, all right. And uh, the title of the video that I will be uh, responding to is Every Knee Shall Bow, all right. And the beloved brother is speaking about, you know, the uh, spirit that's going on in Israel. You see there's a, a heavy spirit of uh, coming up against the son of the Most High, which is how he shows his authority. That's why Yahweh Shai is likened to the right hand of the Most High, okay? He sets his authority, all right, through his son, and he's giving him dominion and in heaven and on earth, okay? Now, before he fully gets that dominion, okay, uh, that he will get on earth, Okay, we had to go through these curses, these different heathen nations had to rule. It was just about at the end of that, okay? But under these heathen rulers, okay, uh, wicked and proud behavior has been able to be the standard, has been able to spread itself. So as you see, the heathen, okay, preparing to fight against the second coming of Yahweh Shai, so will wicked niggas, all right? But at the end of the day, as the title said, every knee shall bow to the name Yahweh through Yahweh Shai because the, the holy hill, right, that's going to be set up on earth. The government, okay, uh, will be established on earth, all right, through Yahweh Shai, which what is he going to establish? A government, which is the tabernacle of David, all right? So every knee is going to bow, <laughs> all right, uh, uh, it, either way it goes. Now, that quote, it's from a series of scriptures. It's about three of them, but I'll start here at Isaiah 45 and 23. I have sworn by myself, the word is going out of my mouth. Now the word is fulfilled in Yahweh Shai, who comes in the volume of the book. You can't have one without the other. All right, the heavenly father, all right, uh, set in order. All right, and either you get down or, or ultimately you're gonna be beaten unto powder as the scripture says. Okay, I was sworn by myself, the word is going out of my mouth in righteousness, it shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear, all right? And it's quoted here in Romans uh, 14 and 11, Philippians 2 and 10, that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee should bow, all right, of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, because that's going to be the ruler of of this government that's going to be set up on the planet earth okay when you get psalms the second chapter all right <laughs> the 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 reign of yahweh's anointed all right uh why do the heathen rage and what are the heathen raging they're raging that they're through their technology are going to reign forever okay they're, they're they're raging that we're not the israelites they're raging on what they're going to do they're, they're, you know their motb or Whatever they got going on, they're raging. They're fake sun. We got an artificial sun, brighter than the sun. So those are the vain things. And the kings of the earth set themselves up and the rulers take counsel together. Now this earth was created for the Israelites to rule, the sons of God to rule in righteousness. All right, but for prophecy's sake, the Lord had what? Heathen rule. Okay, and these heathen are getting proud. And under them, as the scripture says in Sirach, the 10th chapter, as is the ruler, so are the people. So everybody's raging against the Most High and his order and what he's going to do. Okay, and the Lord is laughing. Now, when you when you get to verse 6, it says, I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. All right, now what is Zion? It means, all right, uh, a monument. All right, or it can mean a parched place. Ultimately, that's speaking of uh, uh, his remembrance because there is a particular land from the beginning even Adam ruled out of uh, the, the garden east in Eden that's Jerusalem Israel 
Okay, and he said he's going to set his king up on that holy hill of Zion. Okay. And I will declare the decree. Yahweh have said it unto me, thou art my son. Okay. This day have I begotten thee. You see, and when you go down, Psalms 2 and 12 says what? Kiss the son. Now kiss in ancient uh, uh, customs meant to embrace. It didn't mean a mouth to mouth kiss in every sense. You had the holy kiss where you would lock cheeks, but it was a, it was an act of embracing, reverencing. See, kiss the son lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. Now let's get this in the NLT. Okay, it says Psalms 2 and 12, submit to God's royal son or he will become angry and you will be destroyed in the midst of all your activities for his anger flares up at an instant. But what joy, all right, for all who take refuge in him. And as the scriptures say to the disobedient, he is a stumbling block, a stone of stumbling. But those who believe on him, he is precious. All right, he is the way. Okay, so. You have all of these people bucking up against the, the the authority of the sun. Now, when you go into the scriptures as well, let's see. Let's see here. First John two. And you have this 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 spirit. As a matter of fact, we can just read it. First John 2 and 18 Little children It is the last time And as ye have heard That anti-messiah shall come Even now are there many anti-messiahs Whereby we know that it is the last time So this is a way When you see all of this behavior Where Jake is denying the Lord A lot of you Israelites get irritated You get tired of the the uh, What comes with the gospel You don't want to hear the, the You only want to hear the good But you don't when you see things like back and forths over, you know, like the rap, the news and controversy, those, those were a bunch of niggas who what were they doing? They were bucking up against the sun. So we had to defend the gospel. But that is a way, you know, that it's the last time, meaning that it has to happen. Who is a, a verse 22, first John 2 and 22, who is a liar? But he that denied that Yahweh Shai is the Messiah. He is the anti-Messiah that, that denied the Father and the Son. And see, when you deny the Son, you're denying the Father. We just read in Psalms 2, embrace his holy Son, his royal kingdom, one he's going to set up to rule this thing called earth. <laughs> okay? 1 John 4 and 3, and every spirit that confesseth not that Yahweh Shai is come in the flesh is not of God. Now, you, recent you have this group Israelite tried and refined headed by Nazariah okay a guy who used to be amongst us in the GMS Chicago camp and he waxed worse and worse now he's denying the father he's fulfilling uh, 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 th this this very scripture okay and they think they're submitting to the most high only but what they're doing is rebelling against him man and we're seeing that behavior all right, take place through these different doctrines and these wicked niggas, man. Every knee is going to bow. Whether you like it or not, <laughs> at the end of the day, okay, the, that holy hill is going to be established. Now, this is 1 John 2 and 19, speaking of the anti-Messiah. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So they had to go off and do these different things and start these different schools. And, and you know, from the people who go back to the old school who, who, who are now teaching wayward doctrines to the people since we've come into the truth, who we've saw come into the truth and then eventually venture off and bug out and buck up. And now they're bucking up against the son of the most high, man, which you put yourself in a dangerous place. That's our refuge. OK, it was he who uh, uh, the, the most high God, Yahweh, used to guide us out of Egypt, that those great miracles uh, happen. OK, so the anti-Messiah is here and that is a way we know 
that it's the last time. Okay, and that is the spirit of the anti Messiah, whereof ye, ye have heard that it should come. Even now, it is already in the world. And it's a heavy spirit, and you're starting to see how dark it is, and how bold, and how disrespectful these particular Israelites are who call themselves uh, 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 teaching a doctrine that there is no son, that you can go straight to the Most High, when they weren't even able to do that under the first covenant. Now, Jude. As well, that's has been a heavy spirit on the book of Jude, all right, because he warns you of the history of the ungodly. Now, I'm going to jump to a point. I'm not going to read it all. All right, uh, I'll start at three. It says, beloved, the house of David. David means beloved. Okay, David can also mean uncle because your uncle is usually the beloved one. Okay, it says, beloved, speaking of the house of David, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints so i'm writing unto you of salvation but i have to tell you this part as well right that there's going to be you're going to have to do a lot of contending <laughs> let's look up the word contend for the faith all right. The common salvation is associated with you earnestly contending. So this is why you see these videos. Strong's G 1864. Epago needs a mind. To contend. OK. Add it to new contests and victories. Let's see what it says here to contend about a thing as a combatant. Okay, about uh, intensive agon to contest, to contend earnestly. Okay, and we see these root words. Let's see here. EP four to be against. So you get the you get the drift. Okay, we would we he's writing us to tell us that we are gonna have to contend for the faith. All right, as we know that which is then is now. So he's going to go into the history of particular rebellions. It says, for there are certain men crept in unawares, okay, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. condemnation. And that's the crazy part about Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is that you don't know, even if, even if you're in a good spirit right now, you don't know when he, if he can bug you out. Okay, what, what? role did he choose you for in the movie to, to, to give up you know it's, it's scary that's why you got to constantly uh grow pray deny uh, uh your lust because you don't ever want to get into a situation where you're just proud and you're just saying anything how crazy is it two years ago you have men who were teaching hardcore yahweh bashim yahweh shah now they're saying yahweh shah doesn't exist meaning the lord before old ordained them to this condemnation now what is a condemnation as it says in the book of ezekiel if a prophet raise up saying some bs marvel not i have deceived that prophet because false prophets have to be within the grand the, the, the movie right crema judgments decree all right meaning the lord ordered and wrote them into the movie to be destroyed he sentenced them all right and, and if you notice a lot of them come back and they got a very retorted spirit on them. You know, it's a part of their judgment is their pride and their unwillingness to, to see or be, you know, uh, uh, converted. You know, their, their iron, their minds is seared with a, a consciousness seared with a hot iron. Okay. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God which we're under grace. And look what these dudes are doing with their grace. They're, they're rioting in the daytime. They're using their grace period to feed and sow to the flesh, P push and do their own thing. Take this truth and, and, and what? Make make it make merchandise. Not put emphasis on Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, party on, his, on the Passover. Now, if you look at the uh, Passover that Yahweh Shai had, what he, which he's the altar of our faith when you look at his passover which the passover is coming up okay he was in a heavy spirit he was getting crucified that that uh uh 
that evening. He had to go through that that hell, man. Okay, he was bound. And then eventually, you know, he, he was crucified. So he was lied on. The, the, the followers of Yahawashai were being chased, mocked. So if you're partying on that day, were you partying back then while the true followers of Yahawashai were, were, were? The women, you had women, sisters weeping. <laughs> weeping, man. And what did he say? He, shh, you daughters, this is even, let's go get even worse. Just wait, you know, on down the line when they ban y'all out of Rome and then make it illegal, all right, to, to, to preach what and believe what you believe in, pass particular laws to have you burned alive <laughs> and, and ate and mauled in Colosseums by hungry wild lions. See? So why would you be auctioning off men to women on the Passover, making a making it a party when that's supposed to be a solemn assembly unto us? We're supposed to, because th that, look, those, we can liken what Yahweh Shai was going through, we, we, his emotions, what he was feeling on that night, to how we should be feeling right now. Because we're getting ready to have to undergo a heavy sacrifice for us to get into that next level. And it's going to take a lot of faith. It's going to take uh, 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 determination. It's going to take ultimately the Lord covering you. The end of the day. And how does the, the most high guy, Yahweh, cover with his right hand? Okay. Which the right hand, when you read in the scriptures real quick. Because we always hear about the right hand. Even the law came from the right hand. Okay. Let's get Matthew. Uh, this is Matthew 26. Let me see if I can do that. Go back here. Matthew 26 and 64. Yahweh shall said unto him, Thou hast said, nevertheless. I say unto you hereafter, ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Now, this was when those niggas, all right, bound them up to be crucified. All right. What did they ask him? Because <laughs> they didn't they didn't believe in him. So. The chief priest and these different Jakes. They wanted him out of there, man. And that same feeling, that same sentiment is getting, you can see it happening to us. They hate the followers of Yahweh Shai, man. Even people who call on Yahweh Shai, you hate the true image and authority he's been given. Matthew 26 and 63, but Yahweh Shai held his peace and the high priest answered him and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God. They were calling on Yahweh, right? But they didn't want to believe on his son that thou tell us whether thou be the Messiah or the anointed one, the son of God, because they knew that the son of God was supposed to come. Right. Yahweh shall said unto him, thou hast said you said that I didn't say that. Nevertheless, I say unto you hereafter one day ye shall see the son of man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven, showing you reincarnation. How is how is that particular priest going to see it? And you niggas are back. Those priests who deny Yahweh Shai, okay, they're back today. But what, and you're going to be visited of him, and he ain't coming as a man, okay? He's coming as an angelic force from the clouds. But you're going to see him sitting on a right hand of power. So when you look up this word right hand, which that's all throughout the scriptures, It's dexis, dexios, the right hand, metaphorically, the place of honor and authority. See that? And y'all don't want to deal with the authority that the Most High set up because you, you want it to be you. you, you you're not happy with being under him. <laughs> and you would mess it up. Okay, you give a nigga control of the whole entire planet Earth, man. That nigga, he wouldn't know what to do. 
okay? He'd just start eating and, and having a bunch of sex. No, he wouldn't even think about, well, let's get the earth in order. <laughs> Taking p selfies, flying. That's why it's beautiful that the Lord, you know, we're going up under this order, man, because, you know, imagine having that mindset, man. Jude, verse uh, 4, it says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness, man, and that's what they're doing. Lewd, illicit, freaky, disrespectful, Vow profane behavior is being uh, uh, pushed as a way to be. That's what they're doing with their grace period. And y'all think that that shit is cute. And denying the only Lord in our Lord, Yahweh Shai. See that? Denying. <laughs> all right. Denying the only Lord, God, our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. You see that? As the scriptures say, denying the Lord that brought them. Let's see if we can find that. Where is that at? Yep. Second Peter's two and one. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. And don't you see it? Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that brought them and shall bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now, how, when did the Lord bring us? It's speaking of in Egypt. Okay, when you look it up, and we always go through this, right? It was the Lord, it was the Lord's angel, Exodus 23 and 23, for mine angel shall go before thee unto the Amorites, unto the Hittites, unto the Perizzites. Okay, in the wilderness, it was always that angel. As a matter of fact, Exodus 23 and 20, behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression. So on you, he had the final decision. For my name is in him. He, he's the one. And the word name deals with what? Your, your, your authority. As a matter of fact, when you look up the word name, what is it? Shem. It's like Noah's son whose name was Shem. Okay? Name, reputation, memorial, fame. I, I, I show my fame to men through him. This is the one you're going to follow. Shawam. To appoint, this is the one I have appointed, my my uh, uh, son that's going to sit on my holy hill. This is the one I have ordained. This is my constitution. It's through him. I'm going to fix him. I'm going to appoint him. He's going to be for a sign that I am. And you're going to know that he is. We know that he is by his word. So, there was an angel that was always there and Jake denied him back then and Jake is denying him now. Okay. First Corinthians 10 and four. <laughs> wow. And that was a cloud in the wilderness. That was the son of the Lord, man. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1, moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant that how that all our fathers were under a cloud and passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud. Who was in that cloud? In the sea and did eat the same spiritual meat and drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Hamashiach. So those great miracles that happened in the wilderness were, were, were due to the angel The son of the Lord And Jake denied him Okay They denied him Denying even the Lord that brought them As we just read Alright Isaiah 63 And 8 
what does it say? God's ancient mercies recalled. And Jake loves to bring up the wilderness and Moses, but they never want to deal with, they don't want to talk about that angel. That ain't talking about you. How I ain't talking about no black chocolate idol. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Howard Shad. I ain't talking. Well, who's it talking about? What is it talking about? Uh, evidently, there was a mediator. Okay. <laughs> uh, Isaiah sixty three and eight. For he said, "Surely they are my people, children that will not lie, the remnant, the elect." So he was their savior. And who's it talking about? The one that's going to come and destroy Edom. Verse 1, who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Okay, that is glorious in his apparel, those chariots, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. This is speaking of Yahawashai. Okay, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like he that treaded in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. None of you people are with him. So you, especially you heathen and you Edomites. See, but our own people are going to be trodden in that, that wine press, man. And this is speaking of Yahweh That can be linked directly to Revelation in 19 chapter. But when you go down, it's, it's recalling his ancient mercies unto us and the, the mighty things he did. It says, in all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. See that? The angel of his presence, the one that's on the right-hand side, saved them. In his love and his pity, he redeemed them and bare them and carried them of the days of old. All right? And then it goes into what? The days of Ovi, uh, Moses. Okay? But they rebelled. And vexed his Holy Spirit, therefore he was turned to be their enemy. When you read in the wilderness, that 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 cloud that followed them shot down fire on them niggas, man. What's that in uh, Numbers? And that fire is coming to get you niggas in this time. Numbers, the 11th chapter. And the first verse, it says, And when the people complained, it displeased Yahweh. And Yahweh heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of Yahweh burnt among them. And consume them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. See that? <laughs> and the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, through that angel that was hovering over them, the fire was quenched. So here it is. That's y'all doing the same damn thing now. It says, then he remembered the days of old Moses and his people saying, where is he that brought them up out of the sea? Where's the shepherd of his flock? Did we not just read that it was an angel that led the Israelites through the wilderness, through the the, 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 the Perizzites, the Hittites? Huh? Exodus 23 and 23, for my angel shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Pe Jebusites. All the ites had to go. All right, nigga. But we rebelled. We rebelled, man. So where is the shepherd of his flock? That angel was likened unto a shepherd. Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm. Okay. <laughs> Dividing the water before them. And see, you have to understand ancient cultures, the way of the East, the arm. All right. Of the Lord to have a to, to somebody be your, your arm, meaning that's your right hand man. Okay. Meaning if you as a king sent this. All right. A uh, particular man. In your name or your son, it will be your son. In a lot of cases, you send your son to a whole nother uh, city. He spoke on your behalf. He he is an extension of your arm. See? And it was through that angel that all of those great things happened in the wilderness. But here it is. Going back to the book of Jude. Jude. Okay, here it is. 
Jake is doing the same thing, rebelling against the Lord, man. Okay, denying Yahweh Shai. You see that happening. Even the people who say they're calling on Yahweh Shai, they're saying he don't bring out, he didn't do no miracles. We don't have to worship him. We still go have a Levitical priesthood in the kingdom offering up, up, up animal sacrifices for sins. Like, wait, what, what are you talking about, man? So, going here, let's get rid of these. Oh, let's get the book of Acts 7 and 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spoke unto him in Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Okay? And remember the Lord, the law, the fiery law came from the Lord's right hand. So it was that angel that gave those laws unto Moses, but it was through the Most High. Let's get it. That's not how you spell it. Hold up. See yep. Deuteronomy 33 and 2. And Yahweh came from Sinai through that angel and rose up from Seir unto them and shined forth from Mount Paran. And he came with the ten thousand of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. See, from his right hand went a fiery law. So, okay, so going to Isaiah 9, as the brother Karab brought that out too, you know, Isaiah 9 and 6, all right, it says, For unto us a child is born. Now, you have particular men, I've heard one dude say this is speaking of Eliakim. But there are several of you who say this is talking about the Most High. Now, the Most High came on the earth born as a child? No. Stop. The scriptures say surely the Lord will do nothing. He, 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 he sends men, all right, which he chose in the heavens as spirits down to the earth to do the bidding that he wants them to do. The Lord is going to have to be born. And come in, 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 in flesh. No. He sent his son to do that. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. See and this is what a lot of people don't understand. A government is getting ready to be set up. Okay. When you look up the word government. Okay. When you look up the word government. Masharah. Rule, dominion, government, okay, from shara, all right, to contend, to, to persist, to exert oneself, okay, to preserve, persevere, to contend with, and that's why the scriptures say the gates of hell shall not prevail, all right, now, that, that word shar, all right, all right, shara, is what? In the name Jacob, Israel, Salakia, Yasha Allah, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. It says the root word for government is in Jacob's name. Okay. And he said unto uh, me, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Yasha Allah shall be thy name. For as a prince, thou hast power. That word power, all right, is Sharah. All right. With. The power. All right. So when you look it up. Let's get it real quick. When he changed his name. Yah Shar. Allah. He is a prince with the power. All right. But that word. Sharah. Is what? To contend with, which is the root word of what we just uh, looked up in the book of Isaiah. Okay. The ninth chapter. The government. See, that's what a lot of people don't understand. A government is going to be set up. But who's going to set it up? The Most High is going to do use the authority he always used, his son. Okay. So... 
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now, when you go to the sons of Aaron, what did they bear? Let's get it real quick. This is the book of Exodus 28. Okay. And we'll show you a few other things. Exodus 28 and 12. Okay. And this is speaking of what? The garments of the priest. Okay. The garments of the priest. Right. So Exodus 28. Let's see here. And 12. It says, and thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephods, all right, for stones of the memorial unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear the names before the Lord upon his shoulders for a memorial. Now, who's the high priest in these times? Yahweh Shai. So the government is going to be on his shoulders. And when you read the chapter, it deals with the stones, the 12 stones. Let's see here. Where can I find that? Where are the stones written? Hold up. You should take two onyx stones, engrave them. All right. And purple. Yep, here we go. There we go. Exodus twenty-eight, because on that on that ephod he would have what? Okay, he would have these particular stones, and thou shalt set it in the setting of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be of sardius, which is a, a stone you can look it up. Top a topaz and a carbuncle. So it's four rows of three stones that were on the ephod. Okay. What is that? Twelve. What is that symbolic of the twelve tribes of Israel? Okay. So when you deal with the, the garments and how the, the everything the priest wore was set up, it was all symbolic of Yahawashai and how the government is going to be on his shoulder. He's the high priest. Okay. It says... And the second row shall be emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row shall be uh, a ligwire, an agate, and an amethyst. The fourth row, beryl, onyx, and a jasper. And they shall be set in gold for in their enclosings. And the stones shall be the names of the children of Yasha'Allah. Okay, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet. Every one with his name shall be according to the 12 tribes of Israel. You see that? Now, when you get the book of uh, Revelation 21, when it speaks of the tabernacle of the Most High that's going to dwell with men, that's going to, New Jerusalem, that's going to come down from heaven, okay, as it describes it, all right, on the, you have the, 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 the 12 tribes of it, the 12 angels, all right, uh, uh, written 12 tribes of Israel, okay, on the, the, the east gate, all right, it's breaking down this spiritual temple, then it has the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, all right, then you have the 144 cubits, and then you have what, the, 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 the stones again, the foundations of the wall were garnished, the first foundation, Jasper, second, Sapphire, Chalcedony, Emerald, the stones all over again, which this is ultimately the, the Israelites, the spiritual temple. Okay, so the government, that government is going to be upon the shoulders of Yahweh Shai. Okay, and also when you look up this word for shoulders, Shakam. Okay, shoulder, back, back in general. Now, it says Shakam from H. 7925 the neck between the shoulders as the place of burdens and the burden also fell on Yahweh Shai's shoulder to bring us back as the high priest to bring us back to the most high okay but before he got that privilege back in the heavens on the right hand side he had to carry a burden okay 
So the shoulders is, is, is likened to where your burdens lie. Figuratively, the spur of a hill. Right? Now, what is the spur of a hill? That pointy part at the top. Okay, that's Yahawashai. <laughs> he's at the, the he's gonna be at the head of the mountain. Okay, but the mountain is the tabernacle of David. And that's gonna be established in the earth, man. Consent. Okay? Consent. There you go. The consent of the of of Yahweh Shai, man. So under that first covenant, you know, those burdens were on the shoulders of the sons of Aaron, you know, the priest. You know, for the duties of the temple. Okay. And it's so like right, right here. Exodus 39 and 7. And he shall put them on the shoulders of the ephod. All right. Where the 12 stones lay, which was symbolic of Israel, that they should be stones for a memorial unto the children of Israel. And we are lively stones in this time. All right. As Yahweh have commanded Moses. Okay. Also, when you go um, to the tabernacle, all right, or the temple that was built, you know, or the tabernacle or the temple, however, you know, there were um, hangings on each side, all right, were pillars, all right, um, set, all right, and when you look up that word side, it's kathop and it's likened into a shoulder. Now, when you look at look at it here, you know, support, you know, and it's all it all leads to Yahweh Shai. That's why we tell you everything under that first covenant, the temple, everything leads to Yahweh Shai. It says opposite of the sides, okay, that is of the door of interest, all right, entrance of the tabernacle court, all right. So the tabernacle court to get into it, you would have to go through this door. <laughs> which they were on each opposite side okay there were uh particular things hanging okay and that's likened into shoulders man so it all leans towards your Shai, who he is the door this is john 10 and 7 okay then your Shai said unto them again verily verily i say unto you i am the door of the sheep you see that all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but sheeps, all right, but the sheeps <laughs> did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. All right, the thief cometh not to steal, but for to kill. The, key, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I am come that they may have life. That they might have it and that they might have it more abundantly. And these niggas are trying to take away from the uh, uh, the glory, man. They're trying to take away from abundance, man. They don't want you to follow in the way of the good shepherd. They want you to follow in the ways of rebellion, man. And it's a horrible look. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling. Now, what was a hireling? A hireling was one who was hired on to help the good shepherd, okay, uh, 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 tend for the sheep. But then when the sheep would get in a, in, in, in a bad uh, position, all right, they're in some water or uh, uh, they get fit to get ate by a lion. The hireling would be like, well, I didn't get paid for this. Just give me my hire and I'm out of here. But the good shepherd will go and get the sheep out of whatever crazy situation they was in. As a matter of fact, when you look up, let's see here. Let's see if it's here. Yep. This is uh, Luke 15 and 5. And he spake unto them, start at 4. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the 99 in the wilderness <laughs> the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it see that's how dedicated the good shepherd was because he had a relationship a personal relationship with each sheep he would know each sheep oh this is such as you give them a name he would know them by their their how they act he would it was a very intricate relationship 
and we're the sheep. So when the sheep goes astray, because sheep get extremely simple, and when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders. See that? He laid it on his shoulders, <laughs> rejoicing. And when he come home, he called it together his friends and his neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. And that's symbolic of the Israelites. But notice he put it on his shoulders. See what that means in the Greek. Because that government is going to be on his shoulders. Look, we just on that statement alone, look how many scriptures we've gone through. Okay? Almost a shoulder. Okay? Perhaps alternate a pharaoh to carry some burden to bear with oneself, man. Of Hamashiach the persevere of the universe to endure. And that's what he did. That's what he did, man. Let's see here. Yep. Bear ye one another. Galatians 6 and 2. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Hamashiach because that's what he did. And we have to bear our own burden as Hamashiach did. Okay. The burden of the world. My yoke is easy, but my burden is light. Anyway. So, Yahweh Shai bear our burdens, man. And that's why going back here to Isaiah. <clears throat> Isaiah 9. I don't know. I'll always go to 6. You may need to read that chapter. Reading this again, Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, and he would have to come through the loins and lineage of David. Okay? And unto us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty Power. The everlasting father, and he is a father. Okay? The 144 are fathers as well. Okay? The heads. The everlasting father, the prince of peace. Of the increase of his government, his dominion. In peace there shall be no end. See? And that's, that's ultimately described in prophecy. Let's get Micah the fourth chapter. There's an order to how the Lord is going to set up peace on the earth. But in the last days, Micah 4 and 1, it shall come to pass that the mountain, and who's going to be at the top of that mountain, of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. Let's look up the word mountain in the Hebrew. Okay, and all of these garbage mountains, these governments that are ruling now. Okay. <laughs> Hey, and this is why the Lord said he's going to establish his holy hill. That's a government. All right. Hara. Mount. Mountain. Okay. High elevation. That's a lot. That word mountain is used a lot, you know, but ultimately we know a hill in the scriptures is the, the uh, Synonymous with a government. Okay. And the temple set on Mount Zion. The root word. Hurrah, mountain hill country mount. And in ancient times mounts were very very. They were very very uh, serious to worship in particular gods. Okay. But anyway. The mountain of the house of the Lord. Okay, that holy hill we read about is going to be established in top of all the mountains. I mean, it's going to rule all of these governments. It shall be exalted 
above the hills and people shall flow into it and many nations shall come and say let us go up to the mountain all right of yahweh unto the house of the god of jacob okay <laughs> and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his path for the law shall go forth of zion and the word of the lord from jerusalem new jerusalem as we just read okay you ain't gonna be looking for no ark of the covenant no spirit no 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 physical temple uh, where the presence of the lord though it's gonna be us the law is gonna go forth literally we're gonna have authority to rule under yahweh see that upon the throne of david see and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth and forever. See that? The zeal of Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, shall perform it. So it's going to be his son that all of this rests upon, man. So how in the hell are you denying him? Well, you're denying him because as the scripture said, there will be in many anti-messiahs. This is how we know that it's the last time. Okay? Denying even the Lord that brought them, man. Being disobedient. Being proud. You see? And you're seeing that spirit rise. And it's getting ready to be turned up on a whole nother level. These niggas are going to come after us. These niggas are going to start doing weird agent-like activities, which you already see them doing. Okay? So... The spirit just jumped on me, you know, after watching this brother's video to just get into, you know, come on, man. You, <laughs> if you, hey, we'll end it off here. We'll just say, uh, Luke 9, Luke 9 and 62 says what? No, that's not it. Hold up. 19, Luke 19. Um, yeah, if you're teaching that all nations can be saved, you're denying Yahweh Shai. That blood that he shed was shed for the nation of Israel only, man. And through them, okay, peace will be set up on earth. And the heathen will have some form of, of, of rest. They're going to pay. But, you know, the end all be all is that they learn righteousness. And the Edomites ain't going to, ain't not one Edomite. There's going to be a day when not one Edomite, okay, will be on the planet Earth ever again. How about that? That's scriptural. Now, the other heathen, okay, they're going to be there, but they ain't going to have our glory, but they're going to benefit from our glory. How about that? And if they bless us, we'll bless them. Jake's so worried about the, 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 the heathen. Like, we got to get in order, man. Then we'll teach them. We got to get the kingdom first, man. We want, we need our glory under Yahweh Shah. We need the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah to be magnified. Then we get our, our, our glory, man. Luke 19 and 27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay before me. So you niggas are getting ready to be grinded into powder. And see, as we always read in Luke Luke 2 and 34. And Simeon blessed him and said unto Mary, his mother, behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel for a sign which shall be spoken against. See that? Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts will shall be revealed so he's going to be spoken against and you're starting to see people speaking against him but what what's what's the what did you how should i say but those mine enemies which would not that i should reign over them bring them hither and slay them before me you're going to be judged okay Luke 19 and 14, but his citizens hated him and sent the message after him. We will not have this man to reign over us. And that's Jake 
You can see that. Like they they they're serious about it, man. <laughs> hey, uh, but it leads us back to Psalms, the second chapter, man. Kiss the sun. Anyway, and this is a good one in Matthew twenty one, because they, you know, the way, the way to the inheritance is through the sun. This is Matthew 21 and 37, but last, and you can read this, uh, read this, uh, this parable in your spare time. Matthew 21 and 37, and but, but last of all, he sent unto them his son saying, they will reverence my son, worship, all right? But when the husbandmen saw the son, wicked niggas they said among themselves this is the heir all right and we're we're joint heirs come let us kill him and let us seize upon his inheritance and they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him and that's what those wicked niggas did when yahweh shai came on the scene <laughs> and you're starting to see that spirit boast itself in israel so when it's all said and done, as this brother put, every knee is going to bow. Every knee. Uh, 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 Raqqa of GOCC. Okay. Every member of the Sakari. All right. Every member of IUIC. All Israel is going to bow. Okay. The knee to the names of Yahweh through Yahweh Shai. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, we'll end it off here in Revelation the fifth, the fifth chapter. After the, the 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 Lord gets his credit, angels exalt the Lamb. Revelation five and eleven. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand. And a thousand of thousands. And brothers added that up. And that's like a million. A million angels. Saying with a loud voice. Worthy is the lamb. That was slain to receive power. And riches. And wisdom. And strength. And honor, honor and glory and blessings. And every creature which is in heaven. And on the earth. And under the earth. And such as are in the sea. And all of them. And that are in them heard I saying blessed and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. See that? <laughs> Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And oh yes, all of you are going to bow. Including you heathen, man. So I just wanted to get into that, man. Check out this brother's video. Subscribe. Shalom.